My son recently asked me to build a floating bed, and I've never built one of these before. So this will be just as new to you as it is for me. On the plus side, he did give me free reign for the design, but that also means there's a chance he might not like it. Now his room is small, so we don't want to go any larger than a full-size mattress. But we do want to build something nice that will hopefully be passed on to his kids. The initial plan is to have some hidden storage under the bed, plus some LED lighting to really emphasize the floating feature. All the wood I chose for this bed is standard pine lumber found at my local home improvement store. For the base, I used 2x10s, 2x4s, and a small section of plywood. I usually do not like cutting all of the wood beforehand, but I'm going to make an exception in this case so I don't have to climb up and down my stairs 500 times. At this point, I could tell you all of the cuts I made for the base, but that is boring. So instead, how about I show you a cut list, and that way you can pause the screen if you want to build this yourself. Here's a little tip for you. Whenever you're cutting out lumber like this, a lot of times the ends out here can be really rough and not even square at times. So on some of these pieces, I'm actually going and cutting them about an inch too long, then going back, remeasuring everything, and cutting off the ends so I know everything is square. Once the wood was cut, it was time to make that long trip out of the workshop, up the stairs, walking the full length of the house, and then into my son's room. Now that I'm in his room, let me show you his old bed, which was originally hand-built by my great uncle many years ago. It has lasted two generations, and I hope to one day pass it on to my grandkids. But for now, it has to go into storage. And that means I have to clean up his room so that I can have space to disassemble it and build the new one. One thing that still surprises me to this day is how much my son can cram into a drawer. Somehow, he's able to put 50 pounds of weight into a 5-pound drawer, making it nearly impossible to pick up. I definitely will need his help if I ever move. But that wasn't the only surprise. As it pulled back his sheets, another antique was found. Check out this old mattress. You don't see designs like that anymore. I didn't realize this mattress was this old or this lumpy. So I don't want to put this nasty old mattress on our new frame, so uh, we're going to have to pick up a new mattress for him too. I got to show you the simplicity of this old bed frame. It's literally just side rails with a little ledge and a bunch of wood planks just piled on top to keep the mattress in place. And considering this bed frame is about 50 years old and has been used most of those 50 years, it has definitely lasted the test of time. This old bed is very easy to disassemble. I just give it a bump on the bottom of the side rails and it pops loose. It surprisingly only uses a couple hooks at each corner to hold everything together. I love the simplicity of its design and one of these days I hope to build something similar. It was now time to start the base assembly. I first positioned the 2x10s in the shape of an I-beam because this would give the bed frame a lot of strength and keep it simple to assemble. Then finding the center of the footboard, I started some screws to make it easier once the board was in position. But then I had a problem. Here's a little tip I just discovered. When I first put those screws in, right here was really uneven. But if we lift up the wood with some of the other pieces so it's now nice and flush, it should go together a lot more flat now. And with this process, the headboard went on much easier too. Something to keep in mind whenever you're trying to assemble a bed from scratch, if you're doing it on carpet, there is a little bit of forgiveness because the carpet is not going to be perfect all the way across, and so it may have a little uneven spot, especially just in the floor. Now, if you're doing it on like a hard surface, like hard wood, well, you're going to have to be a lot more exact, otherwise there's going to be a lot of rocking and shifting when the bed's finished. Now, using some small pieces of wood to help assist, I positioned a 2x4 along the sides. This will give strength to the frame, but will also allow me to build some hidden storage. More on that in a little bit. Before I added these screws, I decided to pre-drill each of the holes so it's less likely to crack the wood. The wood went together nicely, and then I repeated this process on the other side. A lot of this assembly process is just completing one side and then mirroring it on the other. I then added the two shorter boards in the middle, trying to center them up as much as possible. When I first put these center boards in place, I forgot to take in consideration that I needed to drill screws in from both sides. So with them being centered, I wouldn't be able to do that. So I've offset each of these boards by half of the width of the board in each direction. In other words, 0.75 and 0.75, and that allowed me to put screws in on both sides. And like I did before, I placed some wood under the pieces to keep them nice and level when screwing them together. I then flipped the base over into its top and nearly did a somersault in the process. Fortunately, I was able to stop what would have been a very ungraceful athletic stunt. Now it was time to attach the doors for the hidden storage, but I came across a small problem. 
Sometimes when you pre-cut everything, you just have either something a little too long or a little too short. In this case, it's a little bit too long. But instead of trying to cut down these pieces, I think I'm going to take the 2x4 that goes in the center and trim off about a quarter inch, and that should give me plenty of room. Now with them a little bit shorter, they fit nicely into place with just a little bit of room for everything to move around. Now I did clamp them in place so when I add the screws, they don't move around on me. And to keep these small pieces of wood from splitting, I decided to pre-drill the holes. Some may not find this necessary, but I didn't want to take any chances. Here's a great tip for you. Whenever you're at yard sales or estate sales, always keep an eye out for hardware. This is a bag full of old hinges that'll work great for this project and save a ton of money. I figured these door hinges would work great for the hidden storage because they were heavy duty and should be able to handle the abuse of a teenager. So I attached them to the door first and then positioned it on the frame for easy assembly. And surprisingly, it worked flawlessly without any binding issues. With that success, I attached the remaining three as well. I then flipped the frame back over to test the doors. It was a little tight to get my fingers under the edge to open, but it was doable. I may have to add a handle in the future. And now that the base frame was complete, it was time to head back to the shop to cut some more wood. I again used a miter saw to cut everything down to size, which consisted of some 2x6s and 2x4s. Now for the outside part of this frame, the part that will actually be seen all of the time, I originally wanted to char this to give it a burnt look. But after thinking about it for a while, I decided that, well, I think I'm going to avoid that for two reasons. First off, my son's carpet is white, and I don't want to take any chances of any of that black stuff falling off and getting embedded in it. And number two, which some of my friends would probably call the real reason, it has been super cold and real wet these last few weeks, and I don't want to go outside in that. So instead, I'm going to try this charred wood accelerator, and let's see how well it works. And just so I don't get any of the boards mixed up, I labeled the inside of each one, and that way I can easily assemble them later. But before we put it on the main pieces, let's test it out on this scrap. Ooh, that looks really nice. I think that's going to work out just right. So I decided to go for it, and applied it to the main boards. This wood actually had another cool feature to it. It looks almost like zebra stripes after I got the stain on it. And after cutting several stacks of wood and making a mess in the shop, it was finally time to take all of this wood upstairs. I also made a cut list for this top section, so just pause the screen if you are interested. Otherwise, let's get started. Now the base frame was definitely in the way in his room, so I leaned it up against the wall with the hopes not to knock it down. I then took into consideration what I learned earlier and placed out some of the smaller boards to make it easier to align the outer 2x6 structure. At this point, when we're assembling the main box for the frame, it's real important to make sure it's square. I'm using some corner squares in all four corners to make sure it is square. But if you don't have corner squares, you can always grab your measuring tape and measure from opposite corners. That's the diagonal across it. And once you get them to the same size, same length, then it should be square. Once all four corners were in place, I pre-drilled three holes in each side to prevent cracking and installed some two and a half inch screws, which should hold it together. Next, I placed a 4 inch section of 2x4 in each of the corners and secured them with screws as well. I then did the same with two more pieces at the center section of each side rail. This may seem a little strange, but I'm actually insetting the mattress frame just slightly. One of the great features of this frame design is the ability to fit a variety of mattress brands. Some brands are a little bit thinner and some a little bit shorter. So by having the support structure slightly inward, you can purchase almost any brand of full-size mattress and expect it to easily fit within these dimensions. And with the outer frame slightly raised, there is no concern of the mattress sliding off its support. Now for the first crossbeam, I installed a 4-inch section in a T formation on the center of the board. And then I slid it into place. Or so I thought. Don't you hate it when you realize you just attached something out of order that you originally planned? Well, I just did that. I got to the point where I was trying to install this piece here, and I realized I can't get to the end for the screws. Um, well, at least I can do pocket screws, so I'm going to put that in both ends. In fact, not only this piece, but those four as well, so let's get drilling. And the first cross beam installed nicely, so I repeated the process for the opposite side. Now, some people might think that pocket screws are not strong enough for this setup, but once I had everything assembled, it should have plenty of strength. Now, since I've done pocket screws on the end of each of these boards, I think these support pieces that will be going in between, I'm going to do some pocket screws on those as well. 
And the rest of the frame is pretty simple. The supports between the cross beams were placed about 15 inches from each side. Then another cross beam was screwed in place along with some additional supports. The only difference among them was the first four cross beams are spaced at about 15 inches and the final at about 14 and a half inches. This was done to keep the spacing between the beams simple but even as possible. You can always adjust the inner beams slightly as long as they stay relatively even. Overall, this inner frame was super rigid and should be able to withstand whatever my son will throw at it. And it was finally time to attach the two frames together. So I laid the larger on top of the smaller and took some quick measurements at each corner to make sure they were centered. To hold these two frames together, I'm going to be using some hurricane ties. You usually find these over in the deck building section. And if these can help prevent a hurricane from destroying a deck, well, hopefully they can help prevent a teenager from destroying a bed. I placed each of the ties close to the corners because I wanted the frame to be as strong as possible. I probably did not need to use all of the holes for screws, but my wife says I like to over-engineer projects, and this was no different. And just in case you were wondering, the sides of the top frame stick out about 12 inches, and the foot is about 18 inches. I then started thinking, would it be possible for this bed to flip over if somebody put all of their weight on one side? So I had to field test it. And the only thing I could think of was to walk around the frame. So my first attempt ended badly as I started to fall off and almost went through the closet door. I then very carefully walked from the headboard all the way to the footboard, crossing it carefully and back up to the headboard without an issue. Under this extreme test, the frame might have shaken a few times, but at no point did it flip upward. Plus, once the mattress is in place, it should be even more stable. The frame is finally together and it has been weight tested, so it's now time to grab that new mattress. We'll lay it on top, we'll see exactly how much of a floating bed this looks like. Now let's walk into his room and see if this looks like it's floating. Ooh, check that out. It's a floating bed. Let's see how low you have to go to see the base. Ooh, all the way down to there. That is gonna be awesome. He's gonna love this. Now there's one more thing my son was requesting for the bed and that's a set of LED lights to go underneath and that should really make it look like it's levitating off the floor. Unfortunately, I probably should have done this before I assembled everything, but that's okay. That's what we get sometimes. So let me take this mattress off and then we'll do our best to get it on there. The LEDs came in a nice roll and were easy to install with the sticky tape on the back side. It did take a few minutes to attach the strip and wiring, but the outcome was well worth it. Now for the moment of truth, let's see if this works. Ooh, blue, green, red, and white. Here's a lower view for you, and that just looks awesome. You can see the base when we're way down here close to the ground, but when we get up to here, you can't see it anymore, and then if you stand up, it just looks like it's floating with a glow all the way around. That is so cool. Now starting off in a hallway and walking into his room, <laughs> he will definitely be the talk of his friends. But what I think does not matter as much as what my son thinks. So, let's bring him in. Yo! Whoa! Yo, it looks so good! I almost forgot. Let's check out this hidden storage. You can see right there, till you get almost to the ground, you can't see those hinges at all. To open it, you just stick your fingers under it and pull up. You got plenty of storage right there under the bed. Now, I probably will end up putting a peg or maybe a small screw or nail right here to make it a little bit easier to open and close, but for now, it works well. Now, if you enjoyed this project, you might want to check out this one.